Welcome to Horse Racing Gamer, where champions are made. YouTube, what's going on? Horse Racing Gamer here. Welcome back to Gallup Racer 2003. I was checking the breeding barn to see what we had, and I realized I'd never bred Crimson Art and Deer Puffy. Strange. I skipped over it. Um, bottom line is, they could actually produce a really solid foal based off of how I think their stats match up. Uh, their growth type should be compatible. The leg type should be even better. Um, in fact, they're both Proceeders, so hopefully that would be the case. We might get a Proceeder slash Closer or Proceeder to Mid. Um, but yeah, uh, we've bred him with Scabbit. We've bred him with everybody except for Perfect Dart, who is his daughter, and I don't want to do that. Because like I said, inbreeding for me doesn't work. I don't know if there's actual uh, game mechanic or something that gives you worse horses when doing that, but it doesn't work for me. So we're going to do Crimson Art and Deer Puffy because nobody else is really worth breeding. Like Absurd Dream has double S for classification, yes, but the stats are not good. I still want really good stat horses, you know what I mean? That'll make things a lot easier for us. So Crimson and Deer Puffy is who we're going to do in spring. I was looking at buying a filly, but to be honest, I think breeding Crimson and Deer Puffy will give us something really strong. Um, hopefully. Because uh, we've only had, I guess, one fall from Deer Puffy. And that's uh, Striking Moon, who we just retired. So I thought we had more from her, but apparently we didn't. Now, again, with Honeybee, I'm going to take things slow with her this year. Make sure we run her properly. So wait till she's in the blue. And see what's the first grade one she can get in. Universal Cup, I mean, that's not a race... That's ideal for her to win. Royal Cup in March, but I don't want to wait that long. So we're going to run her in the February S on the dirt. Because if she can win, this is eight furlongs. She'll be in the blue. We could realistically win that race. And then she'll just need another turf win at 12 furlongs. And she'll have all round her title. Um, well, we could also get um, Generalist as well. Because that'll be an eight furlong race. We've already won eight furlongs on the turlong. We've already won eight furlongs on the turf. Eight furlongs on the turlong. Like, what is... What? Anywho, eight furlongs on the turf with her. So if we do that with dirt, we could get generalist title. If, if it does unlock that way. That's how it's supposed to be. I never know with this game. Kyoto for Crimson. Uh, or excuse me, Vivid. Keep calling him Crimson. Have we won on the dirt with him yet? We have not. Any grade ones for you? Not really. Uh, I could run him in that Kyoto just to see how he handles it and then give him some time off until probably what? March? Because then in March I'll be able to run him maybe in another dirt, the Eagle or the Universal Cup. And then in April King Cup Spring if we win that with him, we'll get Lawn Champ. Uh, well, no. If we win this with him, we'll need two more at this distance for Lawn Champ. So I think that works out. I'll just put him in, uh, in this Kyoto. We'll race him on the dirt a couple of times because getting general Generalist. Actually, we've already gotten all rounder, I forgot. So doing those dirt G1s would, would be just for Generalist, actually. Moon Eyes. This has got to be his year. Um, so far, we're only we can only go for Sprint Champ or Mile Champ. We're closer to Mile Champ though. So, uh, no good Grade Ones for him. He'll be impatient. So I gotta wait till he's back in the blue and then just put him in the first suitable race, which will probably be a Grade Three. It's fine. That's all we can do. Beginning of the year is slow for Grade Ones, man really is. Actually, is anybody even racing this month? Probably not. Oh, Vivid Legend is. So at least we do have a title with Vivid, but like a, I would, of course, be pleased to go for more. So um, he still needs, a, at minimum, three for most of the other titles he can get. With the exception of Generalist, we just need to win on the dirt at uh, any distance from 8 to 10. Actually, any distance from, like, I think 7 to 10, we can win on the dirt with him. So, will that happen? We're the favorite, heavy favorite here today. We could get the second title of 10 and a half, though. That's a weird distance. I don't know if we've gotten a win at this distance on the turf, but 
who cares? We're the favorite. Getting this win will be a lot easier because then I could focus on a 10.5 turf race if it pops up. doesn't happen all the time, but I'm hoping. It's a beautiful day. I'm hoping a win here will put us in good, good shape for that generalist title. But now that I'm thinking about it, can't really recall too many 10.5 furlong turf races in this game. One has to exist, right? Like, there's 11.5. It's a G2. There's got to be a 10.5 on the turf somewhere. Perfect start for our boy Vivid, and we're off and racing. Here for Kyoto. Either way, winning on dirt should help us, I hope. Towards that generalist title. And even still, this this race would also count for the other titles. Because they don't specify if it has to be turf or dirt necessarily. So even still getting a win here will help us with um, the mid-champ title. Actually, that's about it. It'll help us with mid-champ. We'll just need two more. Between 9 and 11 and a half furlongs. So this win is actually very important if we can get this. So on the back stretch is when I'll get him moving. Just going to keep them behind these horses right here. As soon as we get to the back stretch, I'm going to send them on the outside. Hopefully, because we have a long way to go. See, they're going to be working really hard. Now we got to start working them. And we're just going to send them on an outside trip here. You're fine, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. You're okay. You're okay. Okay, we got to move, man. We got a lot of ground to cover. A lot of ground to cover. Let's go. Let's go. All right, let's go, man. A lot of ground to cover. Don't get in my way. Okay, let's see how he runs off this turn. We got a lot of ground to cover, man. Come on, Vivid. Push through, baby. Nope. I don't know if it's going to happen, guys. He's still fighting, though. My horse is still fighting. Oh, it's going to be close. Not going to get there in time. Uh, it's my fault. Could have gotten them moving a lot sooner. Oh, darn. So close, man. So, so, so freaking close. So close. Fourth. Gosh darn it. That's a tough track. You're supposed to win that bad stretch. I know. That's my fault. It's a tough track. Short, tight turns. I'm aware of that. I just... uh. I thought Vivid would be able to handle that and still kind of get through, but... Ah, man, that's my fault. It's a bummer. Doing in trust. Like, my gosh, I'm not doing manual training anymore. It's the only thing about in trust. Like, I know it's not as... Certain things may not go as high, but... My bad, Vivid, man. That was a race we should have won. Gosh, that sucks. That's, that's annoying. That, that's 100% my fault. Royal Cup, I'm not going to run you in that. But I will run you in uh, Universal Cup. That's going to be hard to win. Eagle S at six furlongs. Well, winning this would get him a little bit closer to Sprint Champ as well. Wait, let me see if he's won six furlongs on the turf. Yeah, if he has... Six and a half doesn't really count. I can't remember if we've won six furlongs on the turf yet. Oh, I don't know which one to do, Universal or the or the Eagle S. I feel like the Eagle S would be easier to win. Realistically, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm trying to win. I feel like the Universal Cup on the dirt is going to be very challenging. We didn't win that Kyoto. Ah, this is so. In, I'm so indecisive. So indecisive. Aye, aye, aye. I guess the Universal Cup. I mean, go big or go home, right? At this point, we, we do have a title with them. I don't really have to, like, stress it that much. I would just like to get more titles with them. I feel like the six furlong would be easier with the distance, right? But that's not a guarantee. I might change my mind. Because didn't I run him in the Universal Cup last year? I no, Universal Cup is only four and up. Moon Eyes in this grade three. Not the favorite, but we, we could win. Who did I run in the Universal Cup? Absurd Dream is who I ran in the Universal Cup last year. Absurd Dream isn't as good as Vivid Legends, so... 
We might be able to win that race with Vivid, but I still don't know if that's the right choice. Doing 10 furlongs over 6 on the dirt? In my head, like, the shorter distance would make more sense, right? The shorter distance would make more sense. Even though it f doesn't fall within his range, but he's he's a strong, fast horse, so when we set several records with him, I just know winning the Universal Cup would be a big win for us. It could get him a Horse of the Year award as well, winning that race, if he does well throughout the rest of the year, because that can't help a horse get that Horse of the Year title. Bad position. Oh my goodness. Just because just we're not ahead of one horse? Ridiculous. I don't know what to do with Vivid. I really don't. But the thing is, like, I have to be sure we can win that race on the dirt. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure I can win that race with Vivid on the dirt at 10 furlongs against those really tough horses. I am a little worried about that. Admittedly. So that's why I don't know if that's something I want to do. I think I tired him out too quick. Yep. Ruin this race for Moon Eyes. Fourth place. Maybe we finish where we were supposed to, but he tired out. Tired out for sure. See the one with bad stamina? That's on the stretch though, but Yeah. I might I might actually move him to that Eagle S, that six furlong G1. Because I know I can win at six furlongs on the turf with him when that pops up. I just feel like that race might be... T as good as he is, if we couldn't win the Kyoto, I think trying to win that Universal Cup would be even tougher. Granted, it's a completely different track, but... 90 speed for Moon Eyes. He is the horse of 49 stamina. I still got to get him going a lot later. That's pretty incredible. So, what can we do for you? We can run you in the Eagle S. You know what? Let's just do that. I didn't even realize I can even put him in that race. Because if he can get a win on the dirt, that'd be fantastic. That would put him in perfect position to also get generalist. So, that's what we'll do. I think we can work with that. Honeybee, she's up in the February S on the dirt. It's eight furlongs. We're not the favorite, but we're close. Shady Carol, Urban Carol, all the Carols are here today. All the moons are here as well. All the Carols and all the moons are here for this race. But it doesn't really matter because it's all about the Lady Bee, Miss Honeybee. And um, getting this would put us one more step. Actually, doing this would give her the Mile Champ title. And gets us closer to the all-rounder title. So this win would be pretty important. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, this win would be pretty big for her. If I kept up with all of our G1 wins correctly, she should get mile champ title by winning this. I forgot if this is a short track or not with the dirt. Um, yeah, looks pretty, looks pretty quick. So, um, yeah, it looks pretty quick, but maybe not. Actually, no, it's a little bit deeper than I thought. Okay. So we can actually make a move on this track, because that last one we ran with um, Vivid Legend, really, really, really quick turns. Not every horse does well with that, you know? Okay, so let me get her moving up now, because I know we have a long way to go. Don't get in my way. Oh, revolution. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Just got to lay it on, man, because we still have a long way to go with Honeybee. She's digging in. She's digging in. This is so unrealistic, but, like, we got to win this race. We have to win this race with Honeybee. Come on, honey. Get up there. She's just going to push through. Needed that win, guys. We really needed that. <laughs> Honeybee is a special horse. Honeybee is a freaking special horse, man. She's a special gal. 
Like per like her half sister, Perfect Dart. That that same older dominance, man. Just getting stronger and faster as she gets older. Wow. I hate the the unrealistic, nonstop, obnoxiousness of the revolution and the whip. But my goodness, that's a race you need to win in that case, and we got it done. And I think she'll get Mile Champ title with that. Big grade one win, the February S on the dirt. She's not a dirt horse, but like I said, any horse with decent speed and stamina should be able to win. Whew. Wow. I was a little bit worried initially, but um, I'm not going to save that just because I look so ridiculous. <laughs> but it's a great win, and we weren't even supposed to win that race. Almost double S on everything. That's what I'm talking about. Honeybee gets it done for us. Fantastic stuff. It's what you need from that gal. It's exactly what you need. Mile champ title, please. New skill. What I get? Uh no title. What skill did I get? Movement? Pulls front runners inside and closers outside well. Well, I mean, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. I give you a... Okay, whatever. So, no title. Winning that uh, 8 furlong race on the dirt, no title. So, I guess we still need more. She's got 8 grade 1 win. She's doing fantastic, but... I'm a little bit confused. So, maybe all-rounder now she can actually legitimately get. I thought that would give her the mild champ title, but maybe it is only turf for those. Maybe it is only turf for those. That has to be it, because she's won eight furlongs already. That's her... Th yeah, I mean, that's that's her fifth G1 win at eight furlongs. So if that was a turf race, she would have gotten the title. All right, no big deal. Um, Next up, Royal Cup. Do we need to do this? Yeah, we do. This will put her on par for Sprint Champ, at least. Was there anything else? Is there like another eight furlong somewhere close by? Nope. All right, get her that Royal Cup. That's a, that's an easy Grade One win. Might as well. All right. So everybody's ready to roll. You recommend speed training? Well, I botched that last time, and I don't want to do it again. I know the potential could be a lot better. I'm good with like the guts training, aren't I? I think the guts training is a lot easier. Let, let me actually try this. Because this might be better than just doing in trust if I can still hit pretty high on here. I think this is a lot easier for me. It's more my speed. Much easier. Maybe I ought to stick to just doing guts training. We'll see. I can do right whip. I'm good with right whip. Missed it. That should at least be a high 80, low 90. 88, that's fine. So I, I could probably stick to guts training. That would probably be better than just doing in trust, right? From my, from my understanding, looking at those bars... Good job. Yeah, I might just stick to guts training. That probably would be the best thing to actually do. I'm really in the mood for some pancakes. Kind of want to make some. I think I will. Here in a little bit. So yeah, I guess I'll stick to guts training because those stats will get a lot higher doing that than um, doing the entrust. So that, that's fine. Striking Moon. You're out of there, buddy. Alright, all of our horses are racing today. For this last week of uh, March. Honeybee's up in the Royal Cup. Should be the favorite. If she's not, we should win. Not a single horse in this field can beat us. Stately Voice? Don't think so. We're the favorite as we should be. She looks ready to go as always. Let's go down track side for the Grade 1 Royal Cup with Honeybee. She wins this. It will be her 10th grade one. 
She's always ready to go, man. It's been a, it's been a blast working with her. You know what I mean? It's been an absolute blast because she has been such a strong, fast horse. She's so fast. Her running as a closer is like a real rush, man. I love that in a horse. A true closer. Hold her back, hold her back, hold her back. All right. You're fine, you're fine. All right, gonna have to get her moving sooner though. The race is almost already over. All right, gotta move up here, honey. Gotta move up. You have to take her outside because I don't know what they're doing there. Don't block me. Okay, she's good. And we get another rep. Rebels are so easy with her, man. Oh, my gosh. I don't even need to whip. I really don't. Don't even need to whip the rest of this race. I'm trying to break a record right now, though. Revolutions are so easy with her. She's, she's, she's just a strong girl, man. She's a strong older gal. What can you really say about her? Oh my gosh, she's so fast, bro. From Crimson Art out of Scotch Dancer, her speed is ridiculous. It's another win for Honeybee, and that's her 10th grade one, I believe. Her 9th or her 10th one. She is, a, she is the definition of a true closer, bro. Like, the definition of it. 110%. True definition of a closer there. The honeybee riding off as she always has been with us. She wins the Royal Cup. It's an easy race to win. She does it in style. Not going to save it. She wins it by seven lengths. That is what that gal does, man. That is exactly what honeybee does for us. We'll be next up with Vivid or Moonlight. Or Eyes, excuse me. Racing in Dubai. Not much of a chance here. Let's just go down. I figured he wouldn't, but I'm like, let's give him a shot. After this, though, we'll have to be... Much more strategic in regards to trying to get him a title. But then again, do I even want to use him for breeding? Not really, right? <laughs> I don't want to use him for breeding either. Because his only good ability is a latent ability of rough track okay. He has no latent abilities, so... Or no, um... You know, he has, he has nothing special, really. I think rough track okay is actually the latent ability. I didn't mean to say that. He has nothing worthwhile... It's really, it's what I'm really trying to say. So, using him as a sire, I mean, he has really good speed, but we can use other horses to get speed. So, like, I don't feel like I should use him as a sire just for the speed alone. So, I don't. I might just have him try to just win grade twos and easy grade ones when they're available. I don't want to take away from our other horses that really need those grade ones. So, I'm only going to put him in a grade one if like nobody else needs it. Otherwise, I'll just probably try to win grade threes and grade twos with him. Revolution at 1.7. That's what I thought, right? That's what I thought. Now, if he wins this race, guys, this is big time for Moon Eyes. Down the stretch we come. He's still fighting in the Eagle S here in Dubai. Moon Eyes is reeling it in. Oh, six is just going to get us. What an effort. What an effort for Moon Eyes. That's a big race on a big stage. And he finishes third. Wow. I really thought for a second we had that race won. We finished, what, a length and a half? Two lengths behind the leader who set the record? We're supposed to finish 12th. We finished first. Today's episode, I think, has started off very well for us. That was close. We weren't even supposed to be anywhere near that near the top of that field. We're still in Dubai here with Vivid Legend. Not the favorite, so this is going to be a tougher race for us to win, but I feel like he can beat some of these horses. I really do. That was a great effort from Eagle Eye. Let's see what uh, Vivid Legend is able to do here for the Universal Cup. So, uh, Moon Eyes, I mean, it's a beautiful night for racing. like I said, I, don't, I just don't know if I want to use him for breeding. The horses. I feel like getting him a title would kind of be a waste of time if I'm not going to breed him. You know what I mean? I would just rather just focus on just trying to win as much with him as I can. Because he has no good abilities I want to pass on. And his stats are average. Like I said, he has really good speed, but we have other horses we can breed. Better horses we can breed with 
better abilities with the same speed level. So realistically, Moon Eyes, I don't think we're going to do anything with. I think that's just the horse we'll just kind of um, just race with. I mean, maybe I can use him to replace one of the other sires, but like... I don't really want to do an experimental breeding knowing what I could potentially get. Like, I just feel like breeding him, I won't get... It won't be worth it for the foal. Like, Rough Track OK is the only decent thing that'll pass on and have really high speed. Like, that's... You know, though those are... We can do better. Like, we shouldn't settle for that. So that's why it's like, I don't know what to do with him. I mean, just race him until he wins. We don't need to worry about money, necessarily. Like, at all. Money is really not a worry for us, so, like, there's really nothing left for him to do. Because, like I said, at least if I know I'm going to use a horse as a sire for breeding, then it's worth it. But if we already know we're not going to use a horse for breeding, then it just kind of feels worthless. It feels like a waste of time to go after titles with them, you know? It doesn't feel like it's really worth it. Starting a lot sooner with Vivid Legend. Let's see. Let's see how this does. This is the Universal Cup here. He's still fighting. 12 horses still out in front. Oh, there it is. We needed that. Let's go. Let's go, Vivid. Let's go, my boy. Let's go, man. Reel this horse in. Come on, Vivid. Oh, so close. Oh, two close races in Dubai for us. We just couldn't get there. Oh, I really thought with that strong heart and close race okay, I thought that was going to push him over. And the, the 12 horse, to that horse's advantage and credit, that horse stayed strong. Any weaker horse, we would have won that race. I think that was the favorite. No, Empty Treaty. Empty Treaty is a good horse, though. I was looking at that. We were supposed to finish 7th. We finished 2nd. That's two great results for our horses on a surface that they don't even like to really run on as much. Ah, oh, so close, bro. So freaking close, I swear. So close. Still, it was a pretty productive week because those were two races we really we weren't even supposed to be in the running for. So that went quite well. It's time for breeding. We already know what we're doing. Late bloomer with art of crimson, as he should be. Late growth type. I like to hear that. Late bloomer. So, I'm telling you guys, this horse is going to be really strong, Art of Crimson. From Crimson Art out of Scabbit, he's going to be really tough, really consistent for a long time. Like, he could eclipse what Crimson Art did for sure. He could be our best original cult we've had. He could be our best original cult we've had, Art of Crimson. Hands down. I'm really excited to see how dominant of a horse he can be. Because I feel it. I feel it, man. Yes. And yes. 90, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 90. Art of Crimson, I'm really excited for this horse, man. Really, really excited. Hopefully we can actually get to his race in this episode. His first race. We've done extremely well. <laughs> Very gutsy horse. New foal born, I forgot. Absurd dream of perfect arts. Foal. <laughs> perfect art is a mother officially. And it's a, it's a filly. I think that's good. I think it's good. Because if this horse turns out to be great... Using her as a broodmare. Oh, let's see. We got to go to the random wheel generator for one of your names here. Um, a filly. Let's see. Abigail. I think we're going to go with one of your horses. Um, actually. Oh, this is tough. This is always tough. But yeah, Abigail, we're going to go with one of your names. And we're going to go ahead and do, for this gal, Perfect Art and Absurd Dream. Let's do, um... Hmm. Sticky Toffee. That's so interesting. Miss D, Sweet Dream. Sweet Dream makes a lot of sense. 
Wild Queen. I guess we'll do Sweet Dream. That actually makes a lot of sense. Sweet Dream will be her name for this beautiful gal. Hopefully that isn't a horse that anybody else has used before. Sweet Dream. I like it. Breeding has begun. We already know what we're doing. To the breeding barn we go. I'm going to go ahead and do Crimson Arden Deer Puffy because apparently I just skipped out on breeding the two of them. That's so weird. Crimson Art. Deer Puffy. You look at the stats. You got all B's on the left for, for both of them. And then you have a mix of A's and S's on the right. Dirt for Crimson Art. Turf for Deer Puffy. Let distance is middle. They have the same distance, the same leg type. So we could get a horse that can run a very good mid-distance mile, maybe even longer. We'll have a horse that's most likely a proceeder or a closer. Growth type should be average to sustain at the minimum. Probably will be a late bloomer. And then a horse that should be flexible with the dirt and the turf. We'll have closer and stretch burst okay. as two abilities possibly. It's only going to cost 8000 But that's fine. It's successful. Let's go, baby. Beautiful horse on the way. So actually, let's look at... um. Let's go ahead and look at uh, Sweet Dream. Yeah, cannot wait for her. Really cannot. I think she's going to be very exciting to work with. Um, just making some changes here right quick. But I'll give you guys a chance to look at her there. She is. Um, so, Vivid Legend is four now. She's six. So editing a couple things. I'm hoping she inherits a couple abilities. Like, I see free on there. Um, that would be nice. Way down the line from Perfect Partner, but unlikely. Close race, okay. For both Absurd Dream and Perfect Art. So... She should be very tough, very gutsy, as she should be. I mean, perfect art was very gutsy. Sir Dream was pretty gutsy in the right conditions as well. So, um, things are looking really up. Honeybee's still only A ranked. Like, and her speed has dropped. Is she peaking? She may have peaked. We gotta get her a title. We have to get her a title. We need to win one more grade one at eight furlongs, so she should have mild champ. So, I have to focus on that. That's the most realistic thing. We have to get her a title whenever that's available. Regal S. Perfect. Need to get her a title, then I can focus on the others. So we gotta focus on this mild champ. Winning that, we should be able to win that. She'll be blue. Moon Eyes, 91 speed. Like that's the thing, breeding him would only be good for his speed, his staying, and his power. His stamina is not great. I don't wanna continue to breed horses with bad stamina. And you see his abilities. Actually, those are auto abilities. I was calling them latent. He has no latent abilities. I was right the first time I said it. And he has those auto abilities. So, Moon Eyes is just a horse to use. And maybe if he does well enough and I'll retire him over Indian Tiger or something, maybe I'll breed him in the future for an experimental breeding one year, like in a year that we don't care about. But like I said, that speed is the only thing that's worthwhile. Uh, I don't want to retire him so soon, but like it's just we can't get a title with. I mean, I don't think he's worth passing on anything besides his speed. And like I said, we can get that from other horses. So, you know. Don't really know what to do with him. Just run him in the New Zealand. Top three go to the Young Mile. LA Derby, I don't think he would do well in that. Let's just... Do a great two. And Vivid Legend, you have a title. It's still a long way to go with the other titles, though. Is there anything decent you can do? King Cup Spring, I did say I, wanted, I was going to put him in that. That's a real test for him. Should be able to win that. As tough as it seems, we should be able to win that. Alright, so, great two with Moon Eyes. Uh, not the favorite. Laughing Hawk is in this field. Um, yeah, it's just a shame. You kind of realize that you can't really use a horse for breeding. 
You know what I mean? Like, I don't like the idea of just tossing horses away just because. You know, that feels weird, but... We don't need money. That's the thing. A horse like this in any other game where I'm low on income, these horses are money-earning horses, which then does give them more importance, but... You know, we don't need money. And, like... Him winning a title, but then not using him for breeding wouldn't make any sense. You know what I mean? And like I said, he doesn't have any good abilities to pass on except for rough track okay. And like, that's not even like that fantastic. It's just, it can help you a lot on the rough, but that's not something I feel like I need to pass on to Foles. So unfortunately for Moon Eyes, unless he, um, unless we can start really winning with him a lot, but he's going to peak at this year anyways. Unless we start winning with him a lot and we can achieve more success than I thought. I just think we'll race him until we can retire him, really. Now we have to get him going a lot later. Okay, we can get him going now. Don't block... Don't block me, man! Didn't even need to move like that. So stupid. That could have really cost us the race. Yeah, that cost us the race. Unfreaking believable The AI are so broken in this game. Uh, that could have been an easy first place victory for us and Moon Eyes. That's... Uh, you know, you just hope they don't do that. Hindsight 2020 is just to avoid it, but like you just hope that they don't do it every race. You hope that they eventually just stay into their lane, and sometimes they do. We've ran races and have won races where that lane stays free was already on the straight and then just decided to move off the rough air quotes ah oh, that's so annoying bro that was an easy grade two race to win that was so easy to win i mean I, you know what i can retire him and replace like indian tiger and best hunter i'm kind of sick of seeing them there i can retire him over their slots and see if you know what he has young mile cup um i I, I don't know yet. I'm going to save that because I might do that for Vivid or Honeybee. Oh, probably not Honeybee, obviously. But Vivid, we might be able to put him in the Mile Cup. Eight furlongs. Granted, he really needs wins at seven or shorter or nine and up. He doesn't need anything between eight and ten for a title. So I have time to think about it. I'm not going to do anything yet. Ah oh, man. Something told me I should have just moved just to be careful, but like I just I genuinely didn't think they were gonna move on the stretch. We are the favorite as we should be here today. Ink Jets in this field. These are horses we've beaten. Fast Navy's here. Silly Hawk. It's a tough grade one, but I have faith in Vivid and I think we can win this race. And this will get him two more races closer to that long champ title, which is ideally what I'm going for. That would be fantastic. With his stamina. Having that with horses from his pedigree will be great. All right, let's skip that. Let's get to it. On to the next race. Can't worry about the last one. It is what it is. Long race, though. Very long race. So, actually, I'm going to run him like... Hey, what are you doing? Slowing my horse down and saving his stamina. I'm going to run him like this. It's fine. Want as much stamina. Now, who am I watching out for? Silly Hawk or Fast Navy? Fast Navy also kind of runs like a closer, so I feel like he'll be more dangerous. Where's Silly Hawk at? Towards the front? Silly Hawk is at the front. I'm watching out for Fast Navy, honestly. No positioning's not great. I'll get you moving. My bad, bro. Just trying to save as much stamina with him as possible. But yeah, I'm worried about Fast Navy. I kind of want to shadow wherever he's going. Because we beat Fast Navy before quite by quite a lot. So I want to make sure I keep him in check. I wonder what this pace is. It doesn't tell you. 
Well, at least not like it does in 2004 at the upper left hand corner. Okay. Long race, man. Long race. Really not much to say. I'm just really trying to make sure I focus up and get him ready to strike. May have to run him on the outside. Yep, I'm going to get on an outside run here pretty early. Get him moving. If this is a closable gap. You're not going to swing. You're not going to swing on me, bro. Nope, not happening. Oh, let's see. Here we go. Move him in. Move him in. Oh, look at Vivid. Oh, the field is smoked. The field is smoked. That's my boy. Oh, let's freaking go. King Cup Spring. What a great win. A 16 furlongs. Easy win. Fast Navy. Could not catch us fast enough. Need two more wins at 12 or longer. He's going to get that Long Champ title. That's definitely the priority for me with him. Getting on that Long Champ title. That will be a second title for us. What a strong performance from Vivid Legend. You can't ask for anything better than that on that horse and that race. On that distance, you can't ask for anything much better. You really cannot. <laughs> great ride, great run. There he is. Again, Vivid Legend. The King Cup of Spring. The King of Spring, in other words. Wow. Fantastic win. Running out of space. I still got to move my save files, so I only got a couple more replays left. Five more. That should be enough for this episode. Great freaking run, man. We win that by how many lengths? Four lengths. We beat Fast Navy and Silly Hawk and Inkjet. We destroyed them by more than four lengths. <laughs> Let's freaking go, man. That's what I'm talking about. Getting the job done with Vivid Legend. One title down. Hopefully a couple more to go. So, Art of Crimson. I'm doing guts training because that's working really well for this horse, apparently. From Crimson Art out of Scabbit, this has got to be like a super duper solid consistent horse. I'd be shocked if we couldn't find consistency and dominance with this horse. I'd be absolutely shocked. Da -da. Imagine I should have probably just been doing this the whole time for training with my horses instead of just leaving it to entrust. Probably would have been scoring a lot higher. Stats would have been a lot higher. Ah, come on. Get through there. Yes. That was almost a perfect. 92. It's still good. It's still very good. So very good. I'll take it, man. Art of Crimson's looking very strong, and he's a late bloomer. That means I can try to find success with him extremely early. I'm not going to race him as much as I've raced Perfect Art and Honeybee. Oh, man, he's looking good. He's looking really good, really strong. I am getting excited thinking about his debut. Vivid Legend, 10 G1s for you, my good sir. And uh, you are still looking as strong as ever. So we need two more at that distance. You can do it, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, spring mile? Let's see, there's nothing longer through the, for the rest of this month. Ah, no. I'd be better off doing something at like seven furlongs or shorter. Summer GP? That's an easy one for him to win, but it's not at the distance I want. 11 furlongs. You know what? It could actually get us two steps closer to mid champ as well so you know what we'll go ahead and do the summer gp because then we'll still have two more g1s for mid champ and long champ to win and that should be easy for the rest of the year moon eyes hope you are not peaking already but maybe you have uh i need g1 for you dublin that's fine all right Yeah, I'm really excited for Art of Crimson. I think it's going to be a really, really strong horse. 
late growth type is fantastic to know right off the bat as all of crimson arts foals are that's why i want to continue to use him as a sire because that low late growth type with the right horses is fantastic especially if you have a really good horse so moon eyes competitive field favorite is a stately show but um some other good horses electric arrows here as well so like i said with moon eyes i just no real goal I'll put him in these races, see if we can win him to the best of our ability, but his stamina is hurting him. He has fantastic speed and staying, but he doesn't have the stamina to keep it up. So, like, I have to keep him in striking distance at the front, very close to the leaders, and still not get him going too early. Like, I, it's weird. I've been able to do it before, but... Again, he doesn't have the stamina. Other horses I've had to do this with have had better stamina, so it was easier. But it's a lot harder with him because his stamina is so bad. So, like, I have to time it perfectly. Like, too late could legitimately be too late, and too early could act could more than likely, more often than not, be too early. So, I know he wants to be ahead. He wants to be, like, in fifth. So, yeah, he wants to be right here with these horses. Just doesn't have good stamina, man. This If he had good stamina, that would change the game for him entirely. We probably would have already won several grade ones. If he had stamina, like I said, in the mid-60s or 70s at least, we surely would have had several grade ones to our name by now. Okay, just making sure I'm keeping him close. Keeping him close so he can strike at the right time. Let's see, does he have that turn of foot? No. No. I thought he had a better turn of foot with his speed being so high, but I guess getting him going too late just doesn't work. Still going to finish 6th or 5th? 6th, right? Yeah. It's going to be a tough race, though, for him to win in general. Supposed to finish 5th, we finish 6th. Stately Show sets the record. The Spurt is, is tricky. It's extremely tricky with him because of his stamina and because he doesn't have any great ability. He doesn't have he doesn't have any abilities really. So like bad stamina, no abilities. You know, <laughs> you, it's not much to work with. Honeybee is the favorite here. She wins this, she gets Mile Champ officially because this will be her fifth win at eight furlongs on the turf. So um, yeah, she wins this. We should have Mild Champ. We should. But yeah, Moon Eyes, he's also tricky. Um, he comes from Mr. T and Scotch Dancer. You know? Mr. T was obviously pretty decent. Mr. T was pretty good. Scotch Dancer was solid. I say solid, I mean Scotch Dancer was pretty good for us. Like She achieved exactly what we needed her to. Mr. T, I think, overachieved. He did better than what we thought. Perfect Art has the record here. Stable mate for Honey Bee. Her half-sister, actually. <laughs> Stable mate and half-sister has the record here. So, But yeah, Moon Eyes, again, especially since I'm not using him for breeding. Tricky horse to work with. Tricky horse to work with. He's good when he's good. I mean, he's been consistent, but as far as winning the way I need to win... It's a lot harder with him because his stamina really messes that up for us. So I know with Honey Bee, I'm going to have to get her closer towards the front a lot sooner. Because um, these turns are really quick and you can get lost very quickly if you're not careful. She's got plenty of stamina left, so we're getting her moving at the right time. Bad position? Oh, she's fine. She's fine. We got to get her moving now because look at this. Oh, I don't know if that horse is going to drift or not. There he goes. No Rebo. That's fine. Come on, honey. Oh, no. She's falling back. Oh, she's done. She's done for the day. Wow. Oh, that, that's disappointing. She won this. She finished well in this race before. It's going to say bad stretch, I know. We got her going at the right time, but... I guess off of that turn, she didn't like that at all. She didn't like that at all. She's supposed to finish second. Oh, dear. Dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. That was... 
<sighs> that was a badly botched race. Damn, man. I messed that one up. I've ran that race like that with her before, and we were able to finish really well. So I guess that's just weird to me that we couldn't finish well there that particular time. Yeah, that's disappointing. That could have been the title. It's not over for her, but like that really should have should have been a win, easy win for us. But um, that track is tough, and running running horses wide like that, it, it's tough on a on a track like that. It really is. So, if anything, I either should have had her in the front sooner, like as far as overtaking those other horses, or I should have kept her to the inside and waited for one of those gaps to clear up to give her an easier trip. Because running her that hard on such a turn like that, and uh, it clearly didn't work out for her. Like, she just, she lost momentum. So let's see how Art of Crimson looks as for the final stats. Late Bloomer, keep that in mind. So... Dirt Horse, 7 to 10, good leg type. That's fine. Um, speed, Staying, Response, and Health all have a chance to hit 70 and 80s. 80s for sure. Well, hopefully 80s. Average. Average horse, but keep in mind, late bloomer. Very late bloomer. So I'm um, not going to race him as much. Going to focus on getting easier wins with him. Wins will help him also improve his, his uh, stats. Stamina is 47, so it's good to know that stamina should be in the mid to high 60s, maybe 70s by the time this horse is at its peak. So that's a decent horse. Because keep in mind, when horses have late growth spurts, they really explode like a year before they're at their best. So slow pace, not good. Inside attack and closer. Different mix of ability. Slow pace, not good. I don't like that. That's a little bit dangerous. Inside attack, I'm not familiar with that ability. He's a dirt horse, so we actually are going to have to wait till the end of the year to get him in a race. But I will, as tradition, run him in that six furlong just to see what he's capable of. I'm really weary, though, about um that inside, uh, I mean, that slow pace, not good. Honeybee is on the decline, so she's hit her peak. we got to get her a title. I just need one more spring mile. Much easier. Maybe she can bounce back and win that race. Easier track, easier going. Moon Eyes, I don't know what to do with you, brother. I really don't. I have no idea what to do with you. I'm really hungry at this moment in time, though. So what I'm probably going to do is uh, take my break here and then come back to the rest of this episode. But um, Moon Eyes, I don't know what to do with you, brother. No idea, man. Mars S... I mean, I might as well run him in these races because, like, why not? If he wins a couple of them and he just happens to get a title, then okay. So, Art of Crimson. Slow pace, not good. I am concerned about that. I want to check what inside attack is again because I can't remember. Ah, I'm still upset about that race with Honeybee. That Regal S, we could have won her the title there, but maybe we can win it with the Mild Champ, even though she's not in blue. Abilities, inside attack. Let's see here. Closer is good, though, for Crimson. I mean, Art of Crimson. I can, I can still call him Crimson, technically. Performs well when overcoming horses on the inside in the stretch. So, this is a horse that likes to run as a close. That's conflicting abilities. Because usually when you run as a closer, the inside isn't always free. You have to get used to running your horse on the outside if you run them as a closer. If you want space. So, this is going to be tricky. This is going to be tricky. Slow pace, not good. And then inside attack, it's fantastic when overtaking horses on the inside of the of the track if the, the there's a gap to do so. If there's no gap and we're stuck in traffic, then we're not going to be able to do that. So that's a little bit concerning with those kind of conflicting abilities. Closer is good. Slow pace, not good. That's not ideal, especially when if we do have races with the slow pace. Um, and then inside attack is actually a good ability, but because the AI are literally stupid in this game, I don't know how that's going to go. So we'll see. Uh, we'll come back. We'll get into racing with him very soon here, and we'll continue with this episode. All right, guys, we're back. Unfortunately, Honeybee's dropped down to a B. She's certainly on the decline. 
I thought she would stay at her peak a little bit longer, like Perfect Art, but she still achieved great success. We're approaching our 10th grade one, hopefully. Um, close to 150,000, 13 wins. So she's done exactly what she's needed to do for us. I still just want to give her a title because that would really help her for breeding. She's so close. She really is. She's so close to getting mild champ. If she wins this today, <clears throat> she's not the favorite per recent tycoon is, but she certainly has a chance. Aunt B's in this field, but I think she's much faster than Aunt B. So, really have to try our best here. I would get her if I got her a title, I'd retire her now, honestly. Because I don't want to wait too long, like I've been doing previously. So, we can win this and get a title. It would feel premature to retire her this early, but because I didn't focus on trying to... I hadn't focused on titles in this game until just recently. I wasted a lot of time with her. We could have been working towards these titles and she would have already gotten probably several by now. So that's the only thing. I'm making up for lost time. And like I said, I also don't want to... Still keep racing her when she's past her peak. Unless she's close to getting another title, which she's close to getting two. She wins today, she should get the mild champ. And then um she's also close to all rounder and maybe mid champ as well, to be honest. So there's still several grade ones we can win with her. It's just a matter of whether or not it's worth it for for those titles, you know what I mean? It's like I said, I just I started focusing on the titles too late for her. If I would have started sooner, then like I said, she would have already had two, maybe three or more by now. If I started way too late. Good, there's closer. Or spurt actually. Oh, she's rolling. No rebel. This is her race to take, man. Please keep pushing, honeybee. This is your race to take. She's gone. She's gone. See, this is what I wish I could have did with her at that dirt race, but um, it doesn't matter. She gets another grade one, and then she makes it double-digit 10 grade ones for Honeybee. It's 10 grade ones for Honeybee. She's only our second original to do that in this series. Perfect Art was the first, or I should say a created horse. Honeybee is the second. She's officially eclipsed 10 grade ones. And I hope that's a title as well. <laughs> Let's go, man. <clears throat> She's such a great horse. She's such a freaking great horse. Truthfully. I wish it would just give me that camera angle every time because that to me is like the perfect picture for my horses. Great win, man. Not gonna save that. Well, actually, maybe I will, cause uh, for the highlight, could be important if that, especially if we should get the title based off of that. We really should. We should have the mild champ title, and I'll be able to relax with her, and then I can just put her in a couple more races until the end of the year, just to try to get her another title. But she should have mild champ now. She should have it. But I don't know. She has to have gotten it. Yes! Let's go! Mild Champ Honeybee. Ah, oh, there it is. I can relax now. I can relax. That was very that was a very important win for us, because um now, if she gets a win at 12 furlongs, I think she would win the all-rounder all title. Oh, so much better. Quick save. I just wanted to make sure I got her a title, man. She needed one. So I was long overdue. Art of Crimson, for example. If he's a horse I can work with and his slow pace, not good ability doesn't hurt us, I'm definitely going to work on his titles earlier, which is what I should have been doing anywho. Oh, honeybee, you did it. You won 10 grade ones, and you have gotten a title. I don't even—I don't know if we got a title with Perfect Dart. I don't think we did. 
I'm going to save her right now. But, uh... Yeah, that is officially a title for you. Wow, champ. So deserved. So deserved for Honeybee. So happy about that. Um... Like I said, I could retire her now. But I want to see if we can get all around her. Two titles would be fantastic. Oops, not yet. I wonder if she's the first horse. No, she'll still retire as like B or A, right? Um, I don't know who to replace though. Because Honey Bee comes from Scotch Dancer. Maybe Deer Puffy. Then again, I've only bred with Deer Puffy once and it was with. Uh, undercover agent, so that wasn't really a true test of her pedigree. Perfect partner I still want to keep because that's how we got perfect art. And Scabbit, I think she'll still be okay, so I don't even know who I... Alright guys, so I apologize um, about the recording. It might it just stopped. I looked down and it's not recording anymore. So weird. I don't know what happened. I hope you guys saw that Honey Bee did get the mild uh, champ title. I hope that was kept in there, but I don't really know now. I'll have to wait till I go back to editing. So if you didn't see it, that would really, really suck, obviously. Cause, um, but I'm hoping you guys did. But she's won the title, which is the most important thing. That grade one in itself is a really easy grade one for her to win. But most importantly, she won the title, so... I don't know why that happened. It just uh, cannot wait till I get new capture software. Okay, this, this one just one. stops randomly. I don't know why. There's like no fix. Nobody else knows why that has it. So bad position. What? Not even that bad, bro. They just moved. I swear this is the best we can do with Moon Eyes. Like, he's fighting, but is this going to be enough to get the win? He doesn't have any... Sp if he had Stretch Burst or something, that would help so much right now. He's fighting really strong, considering. He's fighting really strong. It's going to be fifth at the line, I think. Fourth. Okay. That was a tough race. I, th I don't think he's going to win those, honestly. I think he has to run the normal grade ones to have a really... To really have a chance. But I figure I might as well run him in those races anyways. Because the normal grade ones I'd rather use for my horses trying to get titles. Uh, I'm just going to let him just kind of rest. Might as well just race him a couple more times. Because, um, yeah, his stamina is just too bad. It hurts us in the end. Summer GP for Vivid Legend. This is 11 furlongs. If he wins this, I only need two more for mid-champ. So this is an important race. Heavy favorite, as we should be. Easy field. We've beaten every single one of these horses. We've beaten Last Earth. We've beaten Ant B. We've beaten Inkjet several times. Same thing with Silly Hawk and Gothic Value. So it should be another win for Crimson. Another grade one. He is making quite the resume. And that gets us two steps closer to mid-champ as well. Um, so yeah, Honeybee's still trying to get her all-rounder. If we can win that Continental Cup at the end of the year, she should get all-rounder. And that'll be two titles to her name, and that'd be a great time to retire her as a six-year-old. Or if she can win three more grade ones at seven furlongs or shorter, she can get Sprint Champ just as easily, but... She might hit that first, to be honest, because we have to wait all the way till November to run in that uh, Continental Cup. We have to wait a long time, so in between now and then, I'm sure there are several six and seven furlong grade ones she can run in. And um, yeah, if she wins three more of those between now and the end of the year, she'll get Sprint Champ. She still technically has a, has a chance to get both titles. She could still retire with three titles under her name. If, if I run her right, and uh, I keep her in the ideal races, like, because I want her to have the title, and she's not, I think, at her best. She's, she's close to it, but I still think 
she may have already passed her peak a little bit. So I would rather focus on the easier grade ones. I feel, I feel like she's proven herself in Europe already. Now, if a race in Europe is available, okay, but I'd rather run her in North America or Asia. Mainly North America, because Asia's only really going to have dirt circuits, so... I think that gives her a much better chance at getting those titles if I keep her in the easier grade ones. Now, we saved a lot of ground here with Vivid, so I'm going to get him responding now. Let's go, my boy. Yep, catch this horse. You're not going to block us. Good run. Come on, Vivid. You got this, man. You got this. I don't know who that is still keeping up with us. Come on, Vivid. You got this horse, man. Come on, give me an ability. Get the ability. There's no ability coming. Gosh, what happened? Oh, what happened, man? We... <laughs> So close and still couldn't win. Is that gothic value? Come on, man. I should have gotten him going a little bit sooner. I know. Gothic value. Gosh darn it. Blew that race. Uh, that just makes things more complicated, man. That would have helped us for mid-champ. Summer GP. That, that's a pretty easy race to win with the right horse. I just... Uh, Races like those, I wish I could have back so much because I just completely blundered that. Oy, oy, oy. Could have won that with ease. And we threw it right in the dirt. I could still get Sprint Champ with him as well. I'm going to wait because I don't know what I'm doing with Honeybee yet. Oh no, she's fine then. Yeah, races like those, I really wish I could have back. I really do. Because, um... Could have been a pretty easy win for us. Supposed to be. Super Mile Cup, that's going to be another tough race. At eight furlongs, he should be better with that. This gets him one step closer to Mile Champ. Quite the way off, though, actually. Quite the way off from Mile Champ. But I guess I'll do it. Actually, realistically... Ugh, it's fine. Can't make up my mind sometimes. So, Moon Eyes is, Moon Eyes is up there for three-year-old dirt. How? Honeybee and Vivid Legend are both up there for four-year-old and up on the turf. Vivid Legend actually doing good and dirt. Much better year. That's good to know. Moon Eyes, you didn't win a grade one on the dirt. How are you the best dirt horse so far for three-year-olds? He didn't win on the dirt for that grade one, did he? Oh, he won the Young Crown Cup on the turf. What have we done on the dirt with you? I'm genuinely confused. He finished third in the Eagle S on the dirt. Is that why? Oh, yeah, that was a GWS race. I forgot with the ribbon. Yep, classification stuff, that does count. That makes sense, because I'm like, we didn't win anything with you on the dirt. Wow, to think a third place result in that race had him as the best three-year-old colt so far on the dirt? That is, that's bonkers. At least so far, that doesn't... Uh, summer Sprint. Um, This is for Honeybee. If she wins this, two more at this distance. It's a tough field. Summer Sprint. I don't remember how this track is. I'm losing a lot of these races on these tracks for the most part. And that's messing up my spurt. But this should be... We should just be racing straight down the chute, right? Yep. Well, I shouldn't have any navigational problems. So I just need to make sure I keep her competitively towards the front. on why is this 14 horse not wanting to drop further back are you also a closer okay you are hey okay, you got a long way to go get her on the move now
There's a spurred ability. Let's see if she can run these horses down. It's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough with Honeybee. Ah, uh, there's that burst of speed. I don't think it's going to come in time. We're still driving, still driving. Yep, too late. Ah. Darn it. That's two races. I kind of ran them the same way. I just started way too late. Ah. Uh, trying to get her another title. That doesn't help. We're supposed to finish seventh. We finished fifth. We S's on everything. Two double S's. Like, ah. I feel like we could have won that race if I was quicker. Really underestimating the distance, man. I really am sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I nail it. Other times I just don't get it right on the nail. Now she keeps going to the gray. Her speed is definitely dropping, but her other stats aren't. So... Ah. Again, those are races I wish I could have back. Obviously, Paris Mile... Is there not any other easier grade ones for her? Sprinter's Cup? That would be ten times easier. I mean, I know the other race counts for the GWS, but, like, I'd rather her get, for sure, grade one wins to try to get another title, because there's still plenty of time left in the rest of the year for her to still get Sprint Champ. So I'd rather focus on that. I don't want to run another tough race that maybe she is slowly starting to grow out of and um, ruin our chances. So Arda Crimson making his debut here today. The long shot on the turf because, well, he's a dirt horse. Doesn't really matter to me. I want to see how well he fights considering. I think he looks awesome. The blue and white. And, uh, yeah, we got to see how he runs. Decent leg type, so I know how to use that. Couple blundered G1s. Perfect partner is the record here. Perfect start. That's good. I don't want you too far behind, man. I just didn't want you in last place. I don't want you anywhere further than that. So, inside attack, I need to keep him on the inside of the track. He's a horse I actually have to be mindful with that about. Okay. I hate having to navigate traffic. And there's our first revolution with Art of Crimson. Please don't move in my way. Okay, make sure he straightens up. Now we're gone. Come on, Art of Crimson. Could he win his first race on the turf? Not going to happen. I'm trying. He's still not catching this 10 horse. But that's a great effort. Okay. That's dangerous. That was an easy revolution on the inside. Wow, that's a really good first result for Art of Crimson. Supposed to finish 10th, finishes 3rd. Another good eval overall. Yeah, I have a feeling he'll, he'll be a good horse. Above that. Slow pace we may have to worry about here and there. But outside of that, I think he'll be a really strong horse. I'm going to get working on his titles very early, that's for sure. That was a good result, man. I'm kind of... I mean, if he can do that at this point, I don't mind running him on the uh, turf again. But I also don't want to just run him nonstop and get a lot of races going. Now, maybe a grade three I want to step him up to. I need to give him some competition. We'll run him six furlongs for a grade three. As far as his regimen is concerned, we have him on balance. I'm going to want to focus early on stamina for sure. Because I think everything else will take care of itself. I want to focus on that stamina as much as possible. Because it's not too far off from like his other best stats. Which means he should have really good stamina by the time he's at his full peak. So I want that to be as strong as possible. He's only 7-10, to 10, but it'll just help us win a lot of titles. We can win several titles. We can win Mile Champ. We can win Sprint Champ. We could win All-Rounder as well. Like Even though we could run him in races... Longer than his distance if he has the stamina for it. We definitely can. Those races just require really good stamina. Even if, what you know, whatever. Moon Eyes, I just don't know what to do with you, bro. So I'm not going to race him yet. Race time with... Did we not have a race this month? Okay, I, was just, I thought it was 8-3, but it was 8-4. So we'll finish these next crop of races. I think that'll probably... 
in the episode. I feel like this episode's been going on for a while. <sighs> Vivid Legends up in the Super Mile, not the favorite. It's a tough field to gain. Uh, if we win this, they'll need three more for Mile Champ. It is a GWS race, though. It was part of that classification series, so... Or not GWS, but whatever it's called in this game. They just call it like classifications. Even though it's technically just supposed to be GWS. But this game is weird about how it it labels some some things. It's so weird. These games all have sometimes they change so drastically in certain areas from like the first game to like the newest Gallup Racer. They all have changed quite a bit. You know what I mean? And, like, they've all been made by freaking Tecmo. So, like, I don't understand what has happened within Tecmo that they changed some aspects of the game so drastically. You know what I mean? It just doesn't make sense to me. I can run him a little bit closer towards the front. I mean, that... He's Proceeder here, but that mid-type, I think... That mid-leg type is... Highlighted a little bit, so I could probably run him closer towards the front, but I think the reason why we're so dominant with him is because I save a lot of stamp ground with him. He already has good stamina. Now I'm going to get him to the outside here. He's got plenty of stamina left to go. I mean, plenty. Make sure we're ready to challenge the leaders. Okay. Here we go. No Rebo. The three is still there. Other horses are there on the inside with Vivid Legend. We're reeling in the three, though. We're reeling in the three. It's a tough race, but we're pulling away. We're pulling away with Vivid Legend. There's the nine. Nah, man. That's the win we needed. Let's go. Vivid Legend, still a strong horse. Great bounce back. Desperately needed that. Three more wins at this distance. He could get mild champ. So there's still a lot of flexibility left with Vivid Legend. That was a tough, good race to win. In the rain as well. Tough horse, man. Tough horse. Got him going at the right time, and he was strong enough to stay ahead. It's exactly what you need, so. A couple steps closer. He's winning in almost every category, realistically. Here's that stupid camera angle I was talking about. I hate it. Hate it so much, because, like, it's hard to time it before the letters start to get in the way we're supposed to finish fifth we finished first let's go that's my boy vivid that's what he does man that's what he does another grade one that's like his 12th or his 13th he's already got a title again i'm working on more because i don't know when he's supposed to hit his peak so like, there's really no rush to retire him i don't want his stats to drop too much but he's still in good great condition considering Response is still 95. Like, pfft. that was his 11th grade one win. I hear a Nissan GTR outside. I think I saw it earlier. Love that car, man. Paris Mile? Could he win back to back? I think that would be a little bit tough. Let's get him in something more doable, like the London Mile. He'll actually be in the blue. He'll be ready for that. So, Moon Eyes, I just don't know what to do with you, bro. Like, how many? We've raced you 11 times. I just have no desire to really do anything with this horse. I just don't think he'll, he's worth using for breeding. But we'll put him in this grade three. I want him to be anxious while I'll still see if we can get a couple of wins with him. But if I can retire him early, I will. So, unfortunately, for whoever had the name Moon Eyes, this horse, um,. Not a grade one consistent winner, but I think we could probably try to settle for grade threes and grade twos if we wanted. I wish there was a title for that. It would make those races a lot more worth it in some cases, but all right, Crimson's up. Better odds here today. Shorter distance. Much better odds. This is the same distance he ran in the first race, and that was an open. Now it's a grade three, and he actually has a chance to win it. Okay. There he is, Art of Crimson. I think he looks absolutely fantastic. Let's go. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with that one. 
Galbraith are being weird. What a shocker. He has a little bit of a temper. Didn't really pay attention to that the first time out, but... Does have a temper. I can work with that. It's not the end of the world. It's not terrible. I mean, it's certainly not good, but it's not the worst. Still feel like Aunt B had a worse temper. To some extent, but... Could just be me. Okay, gotta get him going now. Forgot how quick this race was. Just waiting for these horses to give me some space. Give me some room. Just in the way as always. Oh, I hate the AI in this game. I really do. That messed up our stretch. See, the inside attack won't always work. For me to hit that ability, I need the inside to be clear. There, It wasn't clear. It was not clear. They gave us better odds today, and ironically, we get blocked. Like, what a joke. He's still finishing decent on the turf, considering, though. Well, he's a dirt horse. Keep this in mind. He's finishing pretty well on the turf, so I think once we switch him to dirt finally, he's going to be a monster. Supposed to finish fourth. He finished ninth. Ah, I wanted to move to the inside to try to get another revolution the same way we did in his first race, but of course the AI can block you, and I did fall asleep for a little bit. Just kind of got lost in thought, as always, and... Um, yeah, before I knew it, three and a half furlongs were there, and I hadn't even, hadn't even uh, gotten him moving yet. Um, to be honest, I might just wait. Can he wait till December for his next race? Can he run in any grade ones? It's the real question. He can run in the sunrise at the end of the year. So, are there any grade ones you can run in on the dirt? I was gonna say I can run him in grade ones now. Like, what am I doing? Just look for dirt grade ones, Eric. There you go. You run them in the Liquor S. His stats aren't, I think, good enough, but who knows? At least him running on the dirt, I think, would give him a better chance, hopefully, even against tougher competition. So, Moon Eyes is up. Better odds here today. In fact, the favorite today, but it's a grade three. I still think Moon Eyes could be capable grade one, for sure. The shorter ones, but like I said... No desire to really do that with him. So that'll be a really tough test for Art of Crimson. Racing in Europe for the first time, or I think it's in Europe. Be interested to see how he responds to grade one competition on the dirt. He'll be running on his preferred surface, but you guys saw his stats. He's a late bloomer, so statistically he's not going to be anywhere close to those grade one horses. But maybe the preferred preferred course conditions will uh, help him out. You know what I mean? Just got to make sure I get him really good inside leverage. Like, I think that'll be the easiest way to tap into his revolutions. We could help us win a lot of races with him. Now, whoever this is, I'm going to need you to like move a little bit. You're holding us up. Thank you. Come on, Moon Eyes. This is a race you got to win, bro. If you can't win this, then all hope is lost and goodbye. And he's dropping. Uh, that stamina, man. 50 stamina. It just it doesn't help him. Any horse with better stamina is not tiring out at this point. You know what I mean? We could have pushed through. So, Moon Eyes. We, unfortunately, my buddy. We got to be done. He did win a grade one. He did win one. That's better than nothing, but... That stamina, I just, I can't do that anymore with horses. I can't work with horses with bad stamina. If I get a horse like that, like, they, they're going to have to be super special. I just, I can't deal with it anymore. So, uh, Moon Eyes, if I can retire you, I can. Uh, replace Indian Tiger, honestly. A ranked, really, from just winning that one grade one. That's amazing. S for classification and A for eval. What? He won one grade one. He doesn't have any good abilities. His speed is his best thing. Like, look at him. He's very average. You know, that's why I have to go based off of the horse's overall performance and titles on top of it. He has a better eval than Mr. T. And Mr. T licked several stats in the A's. Best hunter. 
Best Hunter is even a better statistic horse than I think Moon Eyes is. So the fact that he has A and S, which I know is mainly probably down to that grade one win, and the fact that I retired him while he was still in good condition. But like I said, he has no abilities. I'm kind of out of the mindset of breeding horses without good abilities. Like I said, he has a better e-bound classification than his father. Supposedly that should get us a better horse, but I'm not really interested in a Moon Eyes foal, so I'm just going to keep him back there, to be honest. Now, if I can get a really strong filly with good stamina, some decent uh, special horses available. Spy number, who are you? Sustained growth type, you like to run towards the front. Your gut sucks, your response is okay. Second win and last corner leader. Impost not good. Oh, uh, again, you have bad stamina. I'm so sick of horses with bad stamina. I need, like, good fillies with above average stamina. I don't want any of these horses. I really don't. I know they could help, but, like, I don't want any of these. Now, winged page. Early growth type. 68 stam. She's fast. She can maintain that speed. She has a good feel range. Her health is not great. Philly's okay. No bil no abilities though. I feel like we've we've had a horse with 80 68 stand before. Rich episode 61 average growth type. These horses just don't have good abilities. I'm willing to like try Paradise Gem. No abilities at all. Metals. I don't want these gals with no abilities. The stamina is better, but like it would just be like just repeating what I've done with Scotch Dancer and Deer Puffy. That's I, I don't want to go through that again. So um, I think we may actually end the episode here because we still have quite a bit of racing left towards the end of the year. Or I could just keep this going realistically because Honey Bee I'll be retiring at the end of this year. Vivid Legend I don't know. So actually let's just keep it rolling. Because we can just try to get through the year, that'd probably make more sense. I am really hungry, but I can wait. I'm fine. So the Sprinter's Cup here with Honeybee. She's not the favorite, but um, she certainly has a chance of six furlongs. I'm a little bit worried about how this track may be. It's only her speed that's dropping. and Well, her speed and her staying are dropping, but everything else is staying the same, so... She's still good enough to be competitive in these type of races. So if she wins this, she'll need two more wins at this distance for Sprint Champ. She's really close to another title or two, man. That's why I just you have to put her in the ideal races. But she's already achieved plenty. She's got her title. She's won over 10 grade... Well, she's won 10 grade ones. So um, she has achieved success like Perfect Art. I don't think she's won as much as Perfect Art. But the fact that she already has a title, because I wasn't even focusing on titles with Perfect Dart until it was too late. Now that I have a late bloomer in Art of Crimson, I can focus on titles with him early. Start. Like, I may just have to ignore that inside attack. Like, I might just have to just run Art of Crimson in the best way I can, regardless of trying to get that inside attack. I think that's the best way to get revolutions with him, but it may not be in the cards. May not be in the cards to um, use that all the time. I gotta get her moving now. She's got plenty of stamina. Let's go, girl. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Take that trip. There we go. Okay, good run. Good run. Stop moving in my lane. There we go, honey. Let's go. Rock and roll. She's got plenty of stamina left. Oh, this is done. It's a done deal. There we go. It's another grade one for the honeybee. She still got it. Six years old and she still has it. She still knows how to kick. Let's go. It's another grade one for the bee. For the queen bee. The lady bee. It's another grade one. She wins by several lengths. That's exactly what she does, man. Get her going at the right time. She is a beauty of a closer to ride on. Beauty of a closer. Front post position 14, mind ya. Basically pulled the rich strike. <laughs> she basically pulled a rich strike. Yes. Two more races, two more G1 wins at that distance. Seven or six. And uh, she'll have Sprint Champ. She's really close. She's really close. 
I mean, this is what I mean. Like, I intentionally waited just to show you. That's how stupid that camera angle is. You have to get it from the horse far, far away. So if, going forward, I'm just going to take a snapshot before it even gets to that point. If I really want a, a nice one, because there's no guarantee. We beat Aunt B. We beat Double Earth. We weren't even supposed to win that race. That just goes to show you, she's still such a fantastic horse. From Scotch Dancer, mind you. Yeah, she is something special. Speaking of special, Vivid Legend is up. He is the long shot today in the London Mile. He wins this. He'll only need two more wins at eight furlongs for Mile Champ. So we're getting close with both of them. We're getting close. They already have titles, but we're getting close with another one. So uh, let's rock and roll, man. Let's rock and roll. Can't believe we're finally at this point now where winning titles in this series of this game is actually doable. Because remember, we were really bad in the beginning. We had really bad horses. Here we go. Vivid Legend, he gets this. He only needs two more at this distance. He'll get another title. Scabbit has the record. Could be his future mate, because I think Scabbit is an awesome brute mare, but we'll see. He's definitely doing Vivid and uh, Perfect Art or Vivid and um, Honeybee first. Probably Honeybee, to be honest with you. It depends. Like I don't know how long we'll still continue racing Vivid. Because I could breed him and Honeybee next year. If I retire him before breeding next year. We could do that. Which means we'll be back to kind of um, having to take our time with having some dominant you know, winners. I think Art of Crimson will turn into a winner. But he's, he's a late bloomer. He's not going to be winning right out the gate. Big races. So once we retire Vivid Legend, we'll need another really good double S horse or higher. I mean, S horse or higher, realistically. You're fine, man. You're fine. You have plenty of stamina left to go. Relax. You're fine. Uh, come on. You got these horses beat, Vivid. Come on, man. Oh, this is tougher than I thought. I think I got him going too soon. No, he's still fighting. He's still fighting. He's still in there. The 11 is still with us as well. Oh, there it is. Bears. He drifted, and that messed, us, that messed the race up for us. Or did he still win? I forgot that that happens when he runs out of stamina. That was a really tough race. Wow. Nah, we didn't get the win. I think we got nipped at the line. Gosh dang it. Oh, man. If that didn't happen, we won that race because Polish media wouldn't have caught us. That's a bummer, bro. That's really a bummer. I'm surprised he ran out of stamina on a short, I mean, on an eight furlong race. Tougher course, though. Bad feel, bad stretch. Not the greatest positioning. We still could have won that race. As soon as the bear is activated, he initially, I mean, he immediately slowed down. Damn. That sucks, man. That was that was a race we surely could have won. Uh, okay. Anything at 12 anytime soon for you? King Cup Autumn, that's at 10. I can get him closer to mid-champ. World Mile Cup. Will he even be in the blue for that? He will. King Cup Autumn, I think, would be easier to win, honestly. I'd rather do that. I think that'll be much easier for him to win. Because, again, I'm looking for another title. Honeybee, she needs two more at seven or shorter, or she just needs a 12 furlong race. Hmm. World Mile Cup? That's eight furlongs. I don't need that. I really don't. I don't need that race this year. GWS or not, or whatever. Trying to go for another title before we retire her. We could run her in the Continental. That's going to be tough. But if she wins that, she should win the all-rounder title. And there's no other better races to put her in for that all-rounder title. So if she can win that, she could very well get the all-rounder title. We'll have to do it. Her speed is dropping. Her other stats still are decent. I mean, they're still they still haven't changed. So... Yeah, if we can't win that, I don't know. It may not be worth it. I mean, she's still so close to sprint champ. Two more grade ones at seven or shorter. She could still get that. But I don't want to keep her too long beyond her peak. She's already gotten a title, but I think two. If she wins all-rounder, I might just retire her at that point. Two titles would be 
enough. Again, I got started with her title hunts really late, so I can't, um, you know, I can't, I shouldn't be running her into the ground because I wasn't being mindful of trying to, to win more titles with her and the rest of those horses. Art of Crimson, long shot today, huge long shot. So even though we're on the dirt, the fact that he just doesn't have the stats for this field and this race in Europe puts him as a heavy long shot. Well, I'm not worried about that. I think this horse is strong. He's he's going to be green for a while. He's going to be really green for a while. But um, he still has done well in his first two races with us. He came close in that grade one, right, on the turf. So he still has a chance. As tough as this race will be, he still has a chance for sure. Need to keep him to the inside, though. Yeah, not a good start. So I'm going to have to work him here. Work, 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 work. I need you to overtake a couple of horses at least. I'm going to move him to the inside. Perfect. Now I want you a little bit further ahead. I didn't realize those other horses started to move a little bit more. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Now this should be decent. I feel like we really have a chance to make some moves here. Stamina's doing well, so hopefully that, like I said, his stamina shouldn't be a problem. Okay, this is where the race won. And if we can overtake some horses on the inside, he's really going to like that. Okay, got to get him up here now. We're the long shot, keep this in mind. We have no chance. These horses are gonna move? My gosh. Horse waited so long to move. Unreal. And he's getting left behind. And he's falling back. So not a good effort. Or I think he's trying his hardest, but heavy, heavy, heavy long shot here today. It's kind of crazy to think. Even though he's on the dirt racing against these type of horses, he's just not ready for it. As a two-year-old, he is not ready for those guys yet. Still very green. But uh, it beats one horse at least, and Stretch was S. So if that was a, a better race under better conditions with better stats, we win that. I mean, he was really close to winning that turf G1, which is crazy. Maybe that's what I need to do, which is weird. I don't know why that was harder for him on the dirt than that turf grade one. It doesn't really make sense to me. Yeah, like, look, three races so far. He showed in his open. Oh, he finished ninth in a grade three. What am I thinking about? Thought I ran him in a grade one. Probably thinking about Moon Eyes. So, yeah, though, that's not a great start. That third in the open was good. Maybe he's just meant for opens, honestly. I might have to keep him super green in opens for, like, a long time. Uh, we're, we are going to run him in the Sunrise, though. This is actually a race that suits him. He could have better odds. It's still going to be a tough race to win, but we could see some better fight. So we'll get through these and end the episode. But yeah, I'm not going to race him as much as I raced Honey Bee and Perfect Dart. I don't want him to have, like, 50 races, necessarily. I just want to make sure I'm racing him properly in races that can help him get closer towards titles. So I am going to be putting him in grade ones when I can, the suitable dirt ones or suitable turf ones. Um, just because if he can win those early on before he hits his peak, that's just going to make it a lot easier. So Vivid Legends up in the King Cup Autumn. We're the favorite, as we should be. Um, he wins this. He just needs two more wins at this uh, distance. Between 9 and 11 and a half furlongs. We'll need two more of those for mid-champ. So I'm really hoping we can get that. I mean, yeah, he'll still need to compete in, like, two more grade ones, either for the long champ or the mid champ, before this year is over, if I'm trying to get him the title before the year. It's going to be quite the push, though. He should be further along, but we've lost, like, two grade ones that we really shouldn't have lost, so. Come on, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, please, slow down, please. I think he's okay with this. 
But I don't think he's in danger of hitting his peak that soon. It may happen beginning of next year for his five-year-old season. But, um, yeah, like, he shouldn't be in danger of, like, drastically dropping stats quickly. So we still have chan we still have a chance to win him the titles that I want to win for him before he's um essentially on on like the downhill. Saving plenty of ground here. Easy ride. Keeping him closer towards the front, but he his light type for this is slightly shaded. So that means running up here shouldn't hurt him. Bad ah. Just ran on top of that horse. That horse was just moving backwards into me. Like, okay. Let's go. Oh, it's game over, bro. It's game over. This horse is going to try to fight back, but... Nah, man. If it gets in that head-to-head -head and he's ahead of you, he will pull away. That's another grade one. And that's what my boy Vivid Legend does exactly what he does man gets another grade one two steps closer to mid champ let's keep it pushing let's keep it pushing because if i'm able to breed him and honeybee and they both have at least two or three titles with their stats foals should be freaking amazing i mean i could use them for a while like i would just use crimson art and vivid legend wouldn't use any other sires until a better one comes along That's what I'm talking about, man. Fantastic win. Whatever, bro. This camera angle suck. Gets it done. It's another win for Vivid Legend. It's another win. Hmm. Mile champ, I'm definitely doing that. That should be a very easy win for him. Very easy. If he wins that, he'll need one more win at eight furlongs on the turf. We're knocking on the door of mid champ. We're knocking on the door. And we're right back with Vivid Legend. And we're right back to being the favorite. Far Fog is here. I and mean, we've beaten all these horses. Let's just get to the track. I don't even need to look at it. Yeah, winning this, man. One more race at eight furlongs on the turf. He gets mid-champ. I'm going to get him that title regardless. Like, I know Honeybee for sure may have actually hit her peak. But Vivid is still in prime form. So... Even if I have to race him into the middle of next year, I'd rather do that to get him more the rest of the titles. He's an excellent horse, and I've been focusing on titles with him since the jump. So, like, I would like to win as many with him as I can. Because then I think he will be an even better sire than um, Crimson Art, honestly. With all those titles, I think he will definitely give us something better. Not to mention, he also has great stamina. So, going forward, Vivid Legend may be the horse I can use. With all the other uh, brood mares, which means I can try a Vivid Legend and Scotch Dancer. We can try a Vivid Legend and Honeybee. Well, we are going to do that. We're going to do a Vivid Legend and Perfect Art. Um, Scabbit, we can do. Dear Puffy, I don't know. We can do a Scabbit. But I want to focus on Honeybee, Perfect Art, and um, Scotch Dancer or Perfect Partner, actually. Forgot Perfect Partner is still there, too. Dear Puffy is the only one I may not use, realistically. He's got plenty of stamina. Don't block me. You tried. Okay. Oh, Rebo. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Run him down, man. There we go. He's really responsive on the reins. That's why I don't whip him as much as I can. There he goes. And he's gone. Ah, oh, such a horse, man. What an absolute stud. It's another grade one win. Back to back. Grade one wins for Vivid Legend. He's one more away from Mitchamp. What a freaking horse. I gotta say, I feel like he's 
He's he's more dominant in a way than Crimson Art, despite the fact that Crimson Art achieved a lot. I mean, Crimson Art was Hall of Famer bound, basically. But it's something about Vivid Legend, man. Something about Vivid Legend. Got to give it up for the horse. Because we are in sync, in rhythm. Wins by six lanes. Beats Laughing Hawk by six lanes. Vivid Legend is a crazy horse, man. So we're getting through to the end of the year. Conclusion of this episode. As always, hopefully you guys have been enjoying. A little up and down here and there. But for the most part, I mean, we've actually achieved good success overall. So... It's been productive, as it always should be. Vivid, uh, we need one more for you, bro. I think his stats are slowly starting to drop, but he's got 23 meets, 16 wins, and 13 grade ones. Psh, strong horse. Eight furlongs. Give me something somewhere. Twelve and a half? That gets him one step closer to the long champ, but if there's an eight furlong he can run, I'd much rather do that. Ah, uh, there's no more eight furlongs. Okay. So the the China Mile, is that worth risking with him in the green? Or are we better off settling him for the winner GP? Because if I don't win, the thing is, winning this winner GP, is, I would still need another grade one after this. Like, I still wouldn't have a title. We can actually win a title by doing the China Mile at eight furlongs. So I think I'm going to give it a shot. Make sure there's nothing else better. Long Beach Turf Cup. It's a good race for him. He's in the green, though. And Then again, if we, win, if we win this race, we could run back to back and maybe try to hit that winner GP, too. That'd be very tough. But the game is telling me it's a good race for him. Ah, oh, this is tricky. I mean, this puts pressure because it's like you either need to win. I, I would need to win this race 100%. And then also... Try to win the win, and then also try to win the winter GP. I, it's possible, but like he's close to another title now. I think it's easier to try to win one race for a title as opposed to trying to win two. You know what I mean? I'm gonna try him out in the China Mile, and it's a race that counts for that classification thing too. I'm gonna give that a shot because, like I said, I have to win two races for Long Champ title compared to, and he would be in the green for both that long distance race and his upcoming eight furlong china mile he would still be in the green either way so i'd rather be in the green and only have to win one race for a title than have to be in the green win that race and then try to win another one honeybee she's up here on the continental if she wins this she's gonna get the all-rounder title but she doesn't yeah i don't know what to do i don't know if i should retire her granted i mean there's still plenty of time i can race her up until april for breeding but there's not a whole lot of grade ones between January and April at that point. So if I would like to, if I would want to breed with her, which I would, since she's already won a title. I mean, she has a title, so I would like to breed with her sooner. If Vivid Legend isn't retiring, then I'm just going to do Crimson Art. And uh, well, no, can't do Crimson Art because that's her father, and breeding does not work for me. Yeah, I don't want to breed her with anybody else, honestly. Yeah, I don't want to breed her with anybody else. I'd rather save and wait. For Vivid Legend to come along, so realistically, unless I retired Vivid Legend and Honeybee at the same time, like I'm not gonna be using her for breeding next year. I don't know what I'm gonna do for breeding next year. It really depends on whether or not Vivid Legend will be able to be retired. Like I said, I just don't want to breed Honeybee with anybody else. I don't want to try any more experimentals. Her and Absurd Dream, like I could try that, but I don't know. Moon Eyes technically has the better rank and classification, so. Oh, I see how this track is. But ideally, I would want to use Honeybee with Vivid Legend. So the way I look at it, like, breeding for next episode, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have no idea. I could try Crimson Art and Perfect Partner again. I could try them for like another perfect art, potentially. Um, Scotch Dancer, this is who, this is Honeybee's mother. So, 
Scotch Dancer, and I could try those two again, but I really don't. As much as I love a closer like this, for the pedigree, I still want to have Proceeder as our preferred leg type. You know what I mean? So, I'd probably just do Crimson and Perfect Dart again, to be honest. Or, excuse me, Crimson and Perfect Partner. Got a long way to go. That's why I'm having to work her so much now. Long way. Very long way from home. Come on, honeybee. Oh, this is going to be tough. That 10 horse is not going away, but we're still working with the bee. Come on, tap into something. She still has a chance, though. She still has a good fighting chance. I can't tell what's happening to the inside. No, the 11's gone. Ah, uh, yeah. Started her sooner. Maybe it could have been a different result. Uh, well, trying to win 12 furlongs with her for that title is going to be tough. But that was a tough race for her. I think that might be difficult, even though all, that's all we need for her to get all around her. It might be better just to race her in two more grade ones at six or seven furlongs between now and whenever. Because like I said, unless Vivid Legend is retired at breeding with her. I'm not going to be using her next year, so I don't have to rush. I don't necessarily have to rush her retirement, you know what I mean? Her stats are certainly dropping, though. That's the bad thing. I may just have to retire her. I started really late. Like, is there any more grade ones? Who's in that China Mile? Vivid? Well, he wins that. No, Vivid needs one more race between 9 and 11 and a half for mid-champ. So I could run her in this China Mile and she would actually be in the blue. Or I could run her in the China Vase. I might as well. Because like running her in that 8 fur... I mean, yeah, why would I put her in that? And then 5 furlongs, she could win this. And then she'll just need another one. But again, if she's able to win this China Vase, she could have the all-rounder title. I think that's worth it. I think if she doesn't win this, we probably should just retire her. And just accept that we started too late with her title hunting. But at least she has one, so... Yeah, we'll keep you in that. Yeah, they, they both need just one more race. One more win with these races. So the last three of this episode, they both just need to win these races. And then they'll, they'll both at least have two titles at the end of this year. So, like, it is imperative that I run those races perfectly. And I believe we're going to be back up with Vivid in the China Mile. He should win this, but not the favorite. We're going straight out the shoe, but it's a, it's it's an average kind of even field nobody's like a heavy favorite so as long as we get the jump on these horses vivid legend should win this this is at eight my eight furlongs i lied he won't have a title for this this will just get us two steps closer to mild champ ah darn well winning would still be important because we're still going to race him next year so this would help just would have been nicer to already be close to having two but He's such a strong horse. I still suspect we can race him to the middle of next summer. Honeybee with the record here. Wow. She has. She's won this race. She won this race the last two years, actually. We're running her in the race this year. Okay. It's not straight down. I forgot. It's only eight fur. I mean, it's eight furlongs and not five. Got to keep him closer towards the front as well. That's why I messed up with Honeybee in that last race. I should have just had her a little bit closer to the front. That way she could have really kicked away. She doesn't usually tire out in her races, so keeping her to the front would have actually um would have actually probably worked once we hit the stretch. Bro, I don't like what these horses are doing in front of me. Thank goodness you moved. And you're moving again. Can I even fit through this gap? I'm gonna try. Nope. Let's see. Don't move in my lane. I'm so glad I actually moved last minute because I literally almost stayed in that lane. I swear to you, I almost did. Come on, Vivid. Dig in, man. You got this in the bag, brother. Yeah, that's going to be an easy win. It's going to be a really easy grade one win for Vivid Legend in Hong Kong. Gets it done. Wins by several lengths, as always. And he beats Honeybee's record by six tenths. Vivid Legend is a fast freaking horse i've been telling you guys this super fast horse oh my gosh 
faster than Crimson Art. We've set more records with Vivid Legend than any other horse on this channel. Oh, actually, any other horse on this series, I should say. For 2003, we haven't set... We've set, like, over five or six records with Vivid. I'm sure I can check. This is why I gotta get him more titles, man. Now he just needs two more wins at eight furlongs for mid-champ, or mile champ. Can't... The horse can do no wrong. Not really. And if we've lost races, it's been on me. More so. Record. Gotta save. Gotta save, man. That is what I'm talking about. That is just domination, domination, domination from Vivid Legend. 12th or 13th grade 1. Possibly believe more, but I think maybe it's 13th. And he's still technically two steps away for three titles. Two steps away, man. We're going to do it next year. Get him as many titles as possible. He could be our strongest sire that we could use for a long time. Honeybee is up. She's running the same... Well, she's running a longer distance, and she's actually the favorite. Or no, second favorite. She has a chance. That's good to know. She actually has a chance here today, which means I just have to run this race right. If I run this right and we win it, she gets all-round her title. So this is, this is a must-win for us. It's a must-win. Come on, honeybee. We need this, baby. We need this. We really do. And we're off. She gets out well. It's a shame she's not really a, a mid or proceeder. She gets out so well most of the time. She really does. I'll make sure I save as much ground and stamina with her as possible. I just have to get her moving on the back stretch at the right time. Over to the inside so she saves ground. I forget to do that sometimes. See, we're already gaining ground just based off of having like this positioning to the inside of the rail. I've been neglecting to do that quite a bit, honestly. Now I can move her to the outside, so when she's ready to make her move, we're fine. It's too many horses for me to hope for the inside to clean to clear up. Way too many horses, so I'm gonna run her to the outside because we need to win this race. We really do. So we saved a lot of stamina running that back stretch. Now I'm going to get her on the move slightly. Let's get her moving up. Okay, stamina's looking really good. You're not blocking me. You're not blocking me either. She's got a long way to go. Long way to go. Come on, honey, we need this win. We need this win. Oh, that horse out front is so hard to catch. Come on, honeybee. Oh, we're not going to catch that three, are we? Gosh dang it. I started too late again, didn't I? Started too late. Oh, started too late. Oh, boy. That could have been it. She, she can win that race. Silver letter, not even the favorite, sets the record. We were close. Man, that sucks. Whew, that really sucks. Could have won that race. We were the second favorite. We finished second, but uh, if I would have gotten her going a lot sooner. Uh, then we're racing with Art of Crimson for his last race. So That's a bummer, man. But I don't know. May just have to wait till next year. Art of Crimson is great one. He has a chance to finish in the money if I run him right. It's on dirt in the Kyoto Derby. Good is not the long shot, despite the fact that his stats are still not that great so far. The stats haven't improved since he's left the training facility, so. Ah. Again, those races are the ones I wish I could have back. Because, like, when I know I could have won it, 
it's like, man, just if only I would have known this or known that. Compared to like races where you know, okay, like my horse didn't have a chance, we were still going to lose, that's different. But that type of race, we could have won. Really should have won it. But um, we had a lot of ground to cover. It's the only unfortunate thing about her being a closer, had a lot of ground to cover, and it may have gotten her going a little bit too late. I just wanted to make sure she had enough stamina to get through to the end. So, decent start for Art of Crimson. Make sure I try to keep him to the inside as best as I can. If it frees up, again, there's no guarantee what's going to happen on the inside in these races. It's so annoying. Okay, we're doing good. Plenty of stamina. Like I said, it's a good thing to know that he has good stamina. So once he's in peak condition, he should be really strong. Okay, we gotta push now. Gotta push now because we have a long way to go. Long way to go. Come on, Art of Crimson. Show me some heart, man. Show me some heart. You have so much stamina left. Does he have any abilities? Don't think so. He's fighting strong, but um, he still had so much stamina left. My gosh. That could have gotten him going a lot sooner. Could have gotten him going a lot sooner, man. I've underestimated these dirt courses, to be honest with you. I really have. I'm supposed to finish 8th. We finished 10th, so that was actually worse. Bad stretch, yeah. I underestimated those tracks. Same thing with Honey Bee in China. Well, let's see. The end of the year and the end of this episode. It's a little bit disappointing. I wish I would have gotten those last couple of wins. Vivid Legend's still up here for four-year-old. The Honeybee wasn't too far back. I hope he gets a horse of the year. 141 for the mile category. And he does. Let's freaking go. That China mile, that last grade one with him, that sealed the deal for us. Nothing for Honey Bee, but Vivid Legend gets Best Older Horse and Horse of the Year. Let's freaking go. That's what I'm talking about. Even with that, I'm still in Horse of the Year. That's a second title. I forgot. In this game, it is an, an additional title. Like in other Gallup Racers, it's not. It's so confusing. Jockey standings, I could care less. That's two titles. Or is it just an award? You may just consider it an award. Let me see. Uh, oops. Stats. Oh, they do consider it a title. He's got two titles. Let's freaking go. 14 grade one wins, almost 200k in earnings, 17 wins overall. I mean, we're still going for more with you, my boy. You're still fine. Your stats are slowly starting to drop, I can tell, but you're still strong enough to win a couple more grade ones. So we're going to set this up for next episode. Um, so we're going to have to wait all the way till March. You run him in the Royal Cup. There's a special grade 2 in Dubai. Have any of you ever seen this in this game before? I've never seen a special grade 2. That's so freaking cool, dude. So if you win Horse of the Year, you have access to like a special grade 2. That's so trippy. Is there a catch? What's the catch with this? There's no catch. It's just a special grade 2 in Dubai. That is amazing. I'm still going for Lawn Champ title as well, so I'm probably going to run him in that Climax race or the Royal Cup. Uh, I feel like the Climax would probably be better. I'm really curious about that grade 2, but that's not going to help us for a title. That's just so... That's crazy. A special grade 2. I mean, it's on, it's at the Dubai track. It's just an eight and a half furlong special grade two. I never I never knew they did did that with grade twos. Imagine there's special grade threes. That would be even cooler, dude. That would be really cool if there were special grade twos and special grade threes. So again, for Art of Crimson, I'm just gonna stick him to opens until he's ready to run in those competitive grade ones. I would say by the time he's four years old, he should be ready for grade ones. I hope. On a more consistent basis, Honeybee. 
Her stats are steadily dropping. But I, she still just needs one more win at 12 furlongs, but that might be pushing it. Might be trying our luck. She still could get that sprint champ. So she could run the, the Royal Cup, so we're not retiring her this year, which is fine. I still really do want to get her another title as well. We can run her in the Royal Cup. She wins that. She needs one more. She definitely gets sprint champ. I mean, I'm already past the point of like, oh, if I retire her with bad stats, that may not look good. But I think her having two titles would be better than that. I don't know if this game takes into account your horse at their peak with their when it comes to their stats and retiring and breeding. Or if it, let's say you retire your horse well beyond their peak and their stats have dropped. I don't know if that's what dictates the uh, the overall rank for your horses in the breeding barn. Like, I hope it doesn't. That would be kind of stupid. I get the idea of retiring them in their peak. But I don't know. Anyways, guys, I'm going to do it for today's episode. Hopefully you have enjoyed. Really, really long one. I think oh, well over two hours. So uh, next time we come back, like I said, we're still title hunting for Vivid Legend. Um, he has two titles right now. I would like to get him mid-champ and long-champ and mile-champ. He can still get, like, two more titles. And he's still he's on the decline, but we can still achieve success with him. And Honey Bee... She needs uh, two more grade ones under seven furlongs or, or the 12 furlong distance. I'm, I'm going to try to get her sprint champ, even though the all-rounder is easier. But the 12 furlong race, it hasn't been working out for us. So that'll do it, though. Until next time, Horse Racing Gamer signing out. We have a rain for you today. We shall see you guys later. And goodbye. Welcome to Horse Racing Gamer, where champions are made.